Okay, let's talk about this lens. Been waiting a long time for this lens. Only made for the Sony mirrorless range, this is a lens I have heard a lot about. I've been very keen to get hold of one of these and use it as a wedding photography lens as well as use it for filming. Now, all I've heard is great things, but everything I've seen online is generally to do with films. I've been itching to get this and put it through its paces with regards to photography. Uh, I have a wedding coming up, which I'm hoping to use this on quite extensively. It will be the lens I use pretty much all day. I'll be using it on an A7 III body, arguably the best camera body for weddings out there right now. The price of that alone keeps dropping to what I think is under £1,500, around $1,600, $1,700, which is it's just insane camera for the money. But this is about this lens. Let's do a quick unboxing for you now, and then I can show you what I managed to produce with it at this wedding. So, as we open it up there, A little bit of paperwork, <laughs> not in any language that I can understand. To be honest, the paperwork really is something I always put to one side. I know I choose a camera lens. A lot of this is either warranty or just some very basic instructions on how to zoom a <laughs> zoom lens. This is the one we want. Pop that out of there. That one there, that one there. That can go to one side. And there we have it. It's actually quite a light lens for a 2.8 aperture, although it's not quite 24 mil wide. 28 is generally wide enough. And 75 is close enough to an 85 to, I think, cover quite a wide range of uses. The zoom function's nice and smooth. Take the lens hood off, you can see the size of the element. You can see the size there is really not that big at all, even fully extended. So as you can see, 28 to 75, 2.8. I do like the look and feel of the new Tamron range of lenses. Another photographer that I know has got the 70 to 200 G2, which is the same finish. I was very impressed with that and the picture quality from it is superb. This has had great reviews as well. I've not actually seen anyone put anything up on YouTube with real world use. I'm quite excited to get this on. I'll just grab my ASM3 body. So here's the A7 III, I'll be putting that straight on. And there we have it. Altogether, the weight and feel of that is perfect. It seems perfectly balanced. The A7 III is a light camera as it is, so you don't want a massively heavy lens on there. If you're gonna have a 70 to 200, that is a completely different type of lens. This really is something that I think is a great workhorse for a wedding, can cover most things. If I'm honest, I could shoot a whole wedding with just this lens. Having a wide range of lenses does give you those creative options, but it's not essential, and you'll find that this is a lens you could shoot a whole wedding with if you needed to. I'm not gonna go too much into detail on the specs. There's enough information out there for you to find out anything you need to know about it. I am gonna tell you what it's like and show you some real world results. I've got a wedding coming up, so I will report back on this lens, let you know exactly how I get on with it. Let's see what this bad boy can do. This, this is awesome. There really isn't a lot I can say about this lens other than it is awesome. I've only had a couple of days to play with this and I used it for the last wedding. It was my main lens throughout the day. I wasn't concerned or worried. It performed absolutely brilliantly. I can't stress enough how good this lens is. Right now for the money, £750, just under $900 in the US. There isn't anything better than this. I, there is nothing even better under 1000 When you need a fast zoom lens that covers everything from wide angles to portraits, this really is the lens you wanna get. We'll start off with this first little image. As you can see, I've gone a little bit black and white preparations during the day. The light was coming in, there was a lot of shadows, lots of highlights, um, the detail from the camera obviously does help, um, but the, 
lends itself had no issues at all with focusing at any points of the day uh, especially some of the evening shots which you'll see a little bit of detail champagne flute uh, moving on the bride had a, a lovely little letter from the groom uh, quite emotional with it but this was one photo she was happy for me to show ladies getting ready as you can see look absolutely fantastic uh, and we'll zoom in just a little bit there you can see the, the the focusing system on the sony is superb anyway but this lens doesn't let you down moving outside with the boys uh, this is at 28 mil looks absolutely lovely color reproduction again from the sony and the tamron lens they work lovely together i'm very impressed a little shot inside i have not touched any of these lenses with regards to any of the banding or warp or anything like that i have only color corrected these images so another 28 mil shot any noise you think you might see that's the texture on the suit <laughs> uh, moving on the bride made her way in and they had a lot of fun actually during their ceremony this is at 75 mil the bokeh on it is lovely so a little bit of fast action as they were walking out, being showered in confetti. Uh, again, the Sony performs superbly under any sort of fast moving action, but you will see here, and we'll zoom in a little bit there, you'll see the focusing is, is, is lovely, absolutely lovely. So we went off for just a couple of photos with them before the sun went down. This was only filmed on the weekend in January, so we didn't have a lot of light to play with in the day. But again, lovely detail. That's at 28 mil, and then this is shooting at 75 mil. Now moving on to the evening, uh, I tend to do a lot of off-camera flash. It's my style. Uh, we had a shot of the venue, lovely venue, St Aldred's Park, and then went in for a closer. So again, that's at 28, and then we went in for a closer shot. This was about 50 mil, just to give you an idea. Absolutely lovely, and again, the detail superb. And then inside for a first dance shot, again I like to backlight, the guests in the background showed up just lovely, they are obviously slightly out of focus, being that focused on the bride and groom, but it has come up, has come up lovely. And then back outside for one final shot after the first dance, just one light in the background, they were married in the orangery which is what's behind them there lit up, probably my favourite image from the end of the day. Just another backlight shot that I like to do. You can probably tell I do a lot of backlit photography on the night time. I do love getting a new bit of kit and it really does get me excited again for going out and shooting the next wedding. Anyone coming over from a budget Canon or Nikon range and thinking they like the look of Sony, they want to get into wedding photography or they want to push their wedding photography business to that next level, this is where I would go. I would start with the Sony a7 III and I would get the 2875. Put everything you've got into that you will not be disappointed. I, I can't stress enough how different and how much easier it is to do my job as a wedding photographer with this setup. It's so simple. I do have other prime lenses. I do use prime lenses and I always have used prime lenses, but I've always had that zoom and I've always had that in the backup bag. I started out with a zoom lens. That was how I came into the world of weddings. I had a very cheap zoom lens and a Canon T2i, which was a crop sensor camera. Nothing wrong with starting with crop sensors, especially if it's, you're trying to find your feet. When you're trying to find out if getting into a certain type of business photography, be that commercial or weddings, is for you, why would you go and spend 5,000 or 10,000 if you don't know if it's something you can actually do or you enjoy doing? It's something that this lens will be put through its paces over the next six months. So I will do a six month review, tell you all the little quirks, little things that I found out about it. It is very straightforward. There isn't any buttons on the actual lens itself, so there's no eye autofocus button or anything like that. But as long as you know your camera well, it's pretty straightforward. I've tried to give my real world use viewpoint on this. There are already lots of different videos about the technical specs on YouTube. That's not what this channel's about, not what I'm trying to achieve. I want to show you exactly what it's like to use in the real world. Direct results, exactly what my clients are getting when I'm using the equipment. I love it, absolutely love it. I will leave some links in the description down below where you can go straight to Amazon and buy it for yourself. I hope you like this little video enough to like and subscribe. We've got lots more coming in a similar fashion. Don't forget to hit the bell notification if you wanna be kept notified of when new videos come up. Thanks again for watching and see you next time on Roto.